All right, so video two, day three of the tile saga on Saturday night. About 1 a.m., we decided to stop right there. So in today's video, we're hoping we can get the sink in, trim out the window, get the tile grouted. We'll go from there and see what happens. We're not making any promises because obviously this is the tile job that never ends. It's a lot of tile. But it's pretty. Don't worry about the thick creases because that's gonna trim out that beam. And we've got a little bit of a fudge right there because we had to come across here, but this is all going to be trimmed out so nobody will see that. Otherwise, pretty awesome for old crooked walls. Zeb's putting in the last. I get two pieces. Few pieces right there. And then this Mondo backsplash is tiled, not finished, but tiled. So we'll let that dry and we'll work on this cabinet. This is gonna be the sink. We've got to modify it a little bit to do something custom that I wanna do. Zeb's super excited. All right, last piece of backsplash tile. Do, 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 do. Now we just have three bathrooms to do. That's all right, we got the hang of it now. We're pros. We're adequate pros. Adequate pros. <laughs> Zeb is uh, doing the tracing of our farmhouse sink that we got at Ikea about a year ago. About a year ago, it's been sitting in a box. If you guys hear the noise, we've got some excavating going on. See? We're getting ready to pour the back porch. The back patio and the cement that goes around the house and the driveway that goes on the right side of the house. It'll be completely all cemented so we can get to our backyard. Faucet actually doesn't mount to the sink, it mounts to the butcher block, which is kind of old fashioned. We're actually gonna use our existing faucet at the house because Ikea no longer makes that model and I love it. So I bought a cheap one to replace my fancy black one at our current house and I will bring the black one over here. It's gonna go right there. The secret to cutting this butcher block is a 40 teeth per inch blade. We're cutting this down to two and a half inches and then I'm going to use each side to go on the front of that apron on the sink. All right, so these legs are off of the same table that we have on the front of the island. And just like on the island, they need to be built up a little bit. So we used one leg, cut it in half, and then we've got these little spacers here from the other leg. They're gonna sit right up under here. I'll sand this round this edge so it matches nice and flush, and that'll give this some fun detail. And down on the bottom here, we will trim this out like we did in the pantry so that there's no toe kick. That'll just be flush like a traditional old farmhouse style kitchen. So Mariah told us this morning she was sending us a package up here today. Come to find out, Ty flew up and surprised us. And he's gonna be helping me until Friday and I am super stoked. This is some super good help right here. I was expecting cookies in the package. I got Ty. Mariah said we have to return them on Friday, so. <laughs> return to sender? Return to sender, yeah. Salvation solution is coming in. We're gonna make these match our cabinets. So, oh, you missed filling that. Or you I didn't fill them yet, I gotta screw them oh, up. Oh, gotcha. <laughs> okay. 
Okay, so the reason why we use this is not just because of this, but this area where we sanded, these knots will come through. So we'll do two coats, let it dry completely, and we'll be ready for paint. And I'm using DIY Salvation Solution in clear. I like this because it goes on nice and smooth. To match the cabinets, we're using DIY Speedboard. You can pick up the paint and products we're using today at jamierayvintage.com. We've decided that we're gonna lightly distress these, so I'm brushing it to give it a little bit more of a hand done look as opposed to spraying it like the cabinets. And we will sand it all nice and smooth. I want this piece to look a little bit more rustic because we're gonna be putting a curtain in between these posts. It'll match the corbels that we distressed on the fireplace. Yeah, and I think that I'm also going to be distressing the legs on the kitchen island because the kids are gonna beat them up anyway, so you might as well. These legs? Yep, yeah, make them match. Don't worry, the floor is getting sanded very soon. Soon. Soonish. Gotta get the roof on. So we've got a nice creamy consistency in our grout. I went with a medium gray, not too light, not too dark. And I'm just gonna mush it on here. We're trying to be neat, but it just kind of gets all over the place, so you kind of get what you get. I've just been chasing her with a sponge and wiping it back. We're getting the backyard prepped for some concrete to go around the house and get a back porch going. We'll have a glorious four foot walkway and then a 14, is that 14 feet? 12. 12 feet deep and then how many ever feet wide that is. Plenty of room for a hot tub and an outdoor kitchen. And it wraps around and it has a nice place to park over here if I need to park a trailer or, or the toys that Zeb doesn't own. The toys that I don't own that I want to own, but I don't own. But this, is this cement going to be that deep? No, they're putting road base in on this side because this will be driven on. So we'll get the road base in, compact it, and then we'll form it up and, and pull the mesh over some, through. Something there to hold that back, yeah? Um, no, because it's going to almost be up that high. So this is graded so that we can put a drain along the back of the house here, and then it'll drain out to the front of the driveway there. And the chickens have been having a field day out here all day because it's hot and I haven't fixed their coop yet. They've just been running all over the place in the backyard eating apples that have fallen. They're gonna get fixed because as soon as the cement is done, we're gonna put down seed and fix up this backyard. So to seal these, I'm using our HVLP with Sweet Pickens top coat, no need to water it down. So that will drop a link below with all the information you need for spraying top coat. You got like a rogue hair. I got a rogue lot of hairs. That time of day. Underneath the sink, we're gonna do a curtain. I'm just gonna do a little bit of a mock-up with some tape to show you what it will kind of look like because I gotta take it home and sew it. I'm using a grain sack and I'm just cutting it in the middle. And then across the hem on the bottom. So this is the makeshift version of how you sew. You just tape it with packing tape. So I'm gonna sew this when I get home and I'll make a little loop, a rod loop here. And we're using a tension rod right now, but eventually I will get a more permanent rod because a tension rod will get whip, ripped off. 
Another great shout out to Riyadh Tile for supplying us with this tile and sponsoring this video. Make sure you hit up their website and check out all the beautiful tile they have to offer. All right guys, today we got a little bit further, almost done with the grouting, kind of figured out the countertops, still have a lot of ways to go. We definitely will be sealing the tile, so I'm gonna mention that because I, people are going to ask for sure. And then the next video, you're gonna watch us do some of the finishing touches as well as add shelves and build a hood Yay! vent for the stove. Thanks for following along with us. Make sure you hit up jamierayvintage.com for the paint and products you see us using on all of our DIYs and our kitchen cabinets. And hit up jamierayvintagehome.com if you're interested in any home decor. And a little birdie tells me we do have some of these grain sacks, so we'll drop them in the link below. Be sure to give us a thumbs up and subscribe to Jamie Ray Vintage for more DIY.